When I think of yet another mindless horror remake, a sequel to a horror remake no less, I just shrug my shoulders and turn the other cheek. And don't get me started on 3D horror remakes. Some movies are balls to the wall, others are just balls. I was somewhat relieved to find out that this one is actually more or less a sequel to the original film. Not that ill-received yet not incredibly bad Platinum Dunes remake, but the Tobe Hooper classic that started it all. I have said it before, but I'll take a tired, redundant sequel to a fresh reboot any day. To be fair, I was never a Leatherface fan. Unlike Jason or Freddy, who both had dimly enjoyable cinematic personalities, Leatherface and his crew of happy-go-lucky cannibals just didn't do it for me. For one, the Chainsaw series has very little consistency. From movie to movie, the family changes, with the biggest similarities being between films 1 and 2. And those two films are drastically different from one another. In Chainsaw 3, the pre-Lord of the Rings Viggo Mortensen joined the fray, only to be replaced a few years later by a pre-Hollywood Matthew McConaughey. The remakes completely ignored the fact that Leatherface was a cross-dressing psychopath, and whittled him down to pretty much your everyday chainsaw-wielding uh, psychopath. Minus the cross-dressing. With that being said, this one starts with a montage of scenes from the original Tobe Hooper film, cluing us in that it's taking place in the original timeline. However, it ignores all the other sequels. Basically, the survivor of the first movie, Sally, escapes from the cannibal household and squawks to the police. The sheriff goes to the Sawyer household demanding that they hand over their retarded son, Jed, who we easily deduce is Leatherface. An angry mob shows up to take over, shooting everyone in the household and setting the place ablaze. One of the villagers finds a woman holding on to her crying infant, and in one of the film's more compassionate moments, he takes the baby and kills the mother with a kick in the head. This is where the main plot kicks in. About 20 years later, the baby, now teenager, lives with her adoptive parents when she gets a letter from her dead grandmother's estate, explaining her heritage and informing her that she has just inherited the Sawyer Mansion. Heather, the protagonist, and her fellow meat patties, uh, I mean friends, go down to Texas to visit the mansion, which at first seems like a great place to get away from it all, until they unlock a door revealing Leatherface, who happens to come with the house. One of the film's criticisms is that it doesn't know what year it takes place in. The original film supposedly took place in the 70s, so this one would seem to be set in the late 80s or early 90s. So, then why does one of the policemen have access to a camera phone that looks very similar to an iPhone? Maybe it's implying that the events of the first film have now shifted forward a decade? After all, the film gives a month and a date that the events took place, but not the year. That's the problem with horror sequels. When it comes to dates, no one really seems to pay attention. Without spoiling anything, the movie goes through its paces, and there's nothing that isn't predictable. A bunch of dumb teenagers get slashed in the mansion, the protagonist is pursued into the woods by a much older Leatherface, who for some reason doesn't utilize his odd shrieking that used to be a staple of the character. He's actually much more like Jason, moving silently as he revs up his chainsaw. The one weird bit is how the filmmakers try to make Leatherface out to be some kind of anti-hero, even though he's responsible for a bunch of murders and just killed all of Heather's friends. Even on DVD, it's easy to see where they utilize the 3D, such as a chainsaw being hurled at the screen. This would have been really cool to see in theaters. However, the thing that bogs this film down is just how much CGI there is. We've seen practical effects done before, such as in the numerous Saw films. Every time a really cool death scene comes up, it's watered down by piss-poor animation. The other thing that bothers me about the film is how tame it feels. There's one really gruesome scene involving a disembowelment, but this is the only real standout part of the film. In general, until the remix at least, Leatherface rarely just went in for a kill. He, more than any other horror villains, liked to play with his food. There's a scene where one of his victims lunges at him, and he doesn't screw around. He goes right for the kill, and they show you just enough to let you know what's going on, without being in your face like those needlessly gross Saw movies. But the movie tops out right there. There are some decent scares, but most of them are cheap jump scares, and it never quite reaches that uncomfortable sensation that the original two films gave. However, there are several nods to those films, and it's not without its gross-out moments. Long story short, Texas Chainsaw was a bit disappointing by the original standards, falling short in the scare department. However, I like it more than most of the other entries, because it still feels like a genuine sequel, and isn't as ridiculous as some of the other installments, namely the third and fourth films. If you ignore the latter two sequels and the remakes, this would make for a humble, yet respectable third entry in the Texas Chainsaw Legacy.